afternoon. My name is Alex. This is Georgia, Sophie, Brittany and Jessica and we are the Christchurch Girls High School Monetary Policy Challenge team. Our recommendation is that the official cash rate should be kept at the current rate of 2.5% at this time. As we'll explain to you, while there is the potential for inflationary pressures from some sectors of the economy, we predict these will be balanced by softening inflationary pressures from other sectors. The ability for the Reserve Bank to use alternative macro potential tools to address the concerns of increasing house price inflation has also contributed to our view that there's no need to raise the OCR for this purpose in particular. Consumer confidence in New Zealand, as shown on the graph, has remained relatively unchanged for several months, with a figure above 100 indicating optimists outnumber pessimists. This stable level of consumer confidence means consumers are more prepared to take on debt. This is further supported by the Consumer Financial Stress Index, which fell from a figure of 14.1 in December 2012 to 4.1 in April 2013. Low interest rates, combined with an increased willingness to borrow, is a reason as to why house prices are significantly increasing, particularly in Auckland and Canterbury. This has caused the national median house price to reach a record high of $400,000 in April. Through the introduction of macro prudential tools by the Reserve Bank, however, there are indications that the housing market prices will be restrained. Tools such as requiring higher loan-to-value ratios could be used to reduce the upward pressure on house prices, which in turn will assist to minimise inflationary pressure from the housing market. The tools now available to the Reserve Bank limit its exposure to the effects of both periods of high house price inflation and periods where house prices may fall. They also contribute to a reduced need to increase the OCR to cool the housing market. In the first quarter of 2013, the unemployment rate fell to 6.2% from the 6.8% recorded in the previous quarter. The steadily decreasing unemployment rate means that the household sector has more disposable income, which has the potential to create some inflationary pressure as consumption spending increases. Retail sales have increased by 0.9% in March 2013 and are expected to increase gradually in the months ahead. The Reserve Bank Inflationary Expectation Survey in June 2013 suggests that while consumer expectations are that inflation will exceed 3% in the medium term, the overall mean expectations from all respondents is that it will be nearer to 1.5%. So we do not believe that elevated consumer inflationary expectations will actually cause inflationary pressure. This is supported by the Labour Cost Index, which shows that in the year to June 2013, wages and salaries rose on average by 1.7% also. Overall, there may be some inflationary pressure developing in the household sector in the medium term. Business confidence has been rising in the past couple of months, reversing the trend from earlier in 2013. The Business Confidence Index rose from 32.2 to 41.8 between April and May, and further increased to 50.1 in June, as shown on the graph. This shows business investment intentions remain elevated as they have a more optimistic outlook on the economy. Profit expectations have reached a 22-month high, with a net 25% of firms expecting to increase their profits this year and a net 10% of firms expecting to increase employment. There has also been an increase in pricing intentions, <coughs> with 25% of firms expecting to increase prices in the year ahead. This has the potential to create further inflationary pressure. Capacity utilisation has also continued its generally upward trend and is currently at 91.5%. As capacity utilisation increases and resources become scarcer, the cost of resources will increase and these rising costs may also create some inflationary pressure. The pressure on resource costs is offset to some degree by increases in aggregate supply. Government initiatives to improve productivity through the Productivity Commission and to reduce the cost of complying with regulations, like the Resource Management Act, will increase aggregate supply and con contribute to disinflation. The reduced cost of imported raw materials as a consequence of the higher exchange rate also contributes to disinflation. While the 2013 Budget Policy Statement forecasts relatively strong economic growth rates between 2-3% to in the medium term, the forecast rates of inflation are also relatively stable between one9 and 2.2%, so near the 2% midpoint of the target band. The Canterbury rebuild appears to be accelerating and will create increased, may in create increased demand for resources which will contribute to some inflationary pressure particularly when combined with a very low rate of unemployment in Canterbury. 
Unemployment in the region had fallen to 4.3% in March this year, indicating the regional economy is nearing full capacity and contributing to cost push inflation. An increase in spending on capital and investment in the production sector is also being driven by low interest rates, and we expect some inflationary pressure to result from this. In summary, there appears to be some inflationary pressure developing in the business sector. Within the government sector, there has been a continuation of the policy use of fiscal consolidation as a means of reducing New Zealand's fiscal deficit and our high level of public debt. In the May budget announcement, the government reaffirmed its aim of returning to budget surplus within the next four years and reducing net government debt to 20% of GDP by 2020. Therefore, the government will continue to be conservative with its spending across the economy. As a result of this policy, we do not expect any inflationary pressure in the medium term stemming from the government sector. In the overseas sector, overall growth in New Zealand's major trading partners is forecast to remain relatively steady in the medium term. In Australia, GDP is forecast to increase on average between 3 to 4 per cent over the next three years. This is expected to be driven by high levels of mineral resource extraction, with the continuation of positive outlooks in this area. The euro area has seen increases in confidence and decreased risks over the past quarter, and therefore European economies are expected to grow slowly in the medium term. Growth in the USA rose at an annual rate of 2.5% in the first quarter of 2013, indicating some recovery, although this is still below forecast rates. This is a result of a significant increase in consumer spending, although cuts in government spending dampened projected economic growth. Growth in China at 7.7% this year, down from 7.9% last year due to falling factory output and low investment spending, indicates a slowdown in their economy. The flow-on effects of China's slower growth mean that multiple international economies may see a decrease in demand for their exports relative to recent trade, and therefore global trade with China may fall. We predict the net impact of growth amongst our main trading partners will be modest gains in demand for our exports. Therefore, there appears to be minimal inflationary pressure in the medium term stemming from trading partner growth. We predict that softer global commodity prices will contribute to reduced inflationary pressures into the medium term. The ANZ Commodity Price Index saw a fall of 3.7% from May to June, continuing its downward trend. Nine commodity prices fell, led by a 9% decline in whole milk powder, while five commodities rose in price, led by a 5% increase in wool prices during June. It's forecast that commodity prices will continue to weaken in coming months, contributing to reduced inflationary pressures into the medium term. The high New Zealand dollar continues to have a dampening impact on the level of New Zealand exports. The trade weighted index is forecast to remain high and in 2014 reach a peak at 77 as stimulus measures such as quantitative easing continue in Japan and the USA. While the terms of trade rose 4.1% in the March 2013 quarter, this continues to be offset by the high exchange rate. In summary, some trading partner growth could potentially cause inflationary pressure, but this is currently offset by declining commodity prices and the high exchange rate. On balance, there is therefore mild inflationary pressure stemming from the overseas sector. In conclusion, we predict there will be some inflationary pressure coming from consumption spending, as consumer confidence levels are high and they have a high willing willingness to borrow, which when paired with the low interest rate is causing higher house prices. However, macroprudential tools made available to the Reserve Bank by the government can be used to help alleviate some of this house price inflationary pressure. There will also be some inflationary pressure from investment, uh, business confidence and the Canterbury rebuild as they gain momentum. Fiscal consolidation is ensuring little inflationary pressure from the government sector, however we also expect mild inflationary pressure coming from the overseas sector as overall trading from overall trading partner growth, but this is constrained by low commodity prices and the high exchange rate. On balance, it is therefore our recommendation to maintain the OCR at the current rate of 2.5% to keep the rate of inflation near the 2% midpoint of the 1-3% target band into the medium term. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I'll start off with the questions. Uh, so in your second to last slide, I think it was, you pointed out that the exchange rate is quite high at the moment. Why do you think this is? Uh, we also 
that we feel there's quantitative easing within the, um, Japan and the USA that we're experiencing at the moment. And due to the increase in money supply in these economies due to quantitative easing, we're seeing a depreciation of their dollar relative to ours, so therefore we're appreciating the New Zealand dollar. So that's one factor that contributes to the high exchange rate that we're experiencing at the moment. that then. So if um, you said you mentioned the effect of quantitative easing on the currency, what other effects might quantitative easing in those offshore economies have on New Zealand? So quantitative easing affects not only the exchange rate but also growth within the economies of which are experiencing the quantitative easing as it is a measure of um, stimulating economic growth. So we're seeing an increase in the economic growth in those countries, so there's an increase in demand for our exports, which will increase in exports and increasing aggregate demand. And it also flows through other neighbouring countries, such as our main trading partners such as Australia, they may experience increase in demand for their exports, flowing through to increasing demand for our exports as they may also experience growth through the increase in demand for the exports. And it also has an effect on aggregate supply, which will be that as they're having uh, increased economic growth, they're going to have increased demand for global commodities and resources, which will increase the scarcity of them, incre increase their scarcity, increase their price, and uh, increase make the cost of raw, increase the cost of raw materials. Yeah. Yeah. So increasing cost of production within New Zealand. And increasing aggregate supply leading to decreasing supply, and leading to deflation, inflationary pressures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the Reserve Bank has a target for inflation of between one and three percent. Can you justify why we have that target? So there's two deflation. We could talk about why there's a minimum deflation. Yeah. yeah. Because the maximum percent of one, obviously one, one too much. One percent of inflation is better than yeah. zero yeah. inflation. Yeah. 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 A small amount of inflation is considerably better than no inflation or even worse, dis uh, deflation. When there's deflation in the economy, uh, consumers particularly will think that prices will be cheaper in coming months, so they'll be better off to buy in coming months, so they'll decrease consumption spending, uh, decreasing aggregate demand and causing further deflationary pressures. Um, and it also flows through to uh, producers, where, oh, do you want to say that? Um, producers, if they know that prices are likely to be falling in the future, then they will be looking to cut costs where they can, and that may include laying off workers, and then that will also reduce consumption spending further, decreasing. So there's like a spiral of deflationary pressure, yeah, so which is yeah. going to be decreasing growth as well. Yeah, because there's negative impacts of deflation on economic growth and also employment within our economy. So overall, we feel that it is the case of that the one band is there so that we have some inflation in our economy but not so much that it harms the economy of really high price levels yep. which can also have a negative impact on economic growth and employment. Um, should we do negative of the high inflation? Yeah. Um, high inflation can, above 3% or getting higher can also have many costs to the economy for households and firms such as for households those on fixed incomes or those who aren't able to negotiate wage increases, if their wages fail to keep pace with inflation then they'll suffer loss in real wages and purchasing power. Um, firms will, n knowing that prices are inflationary expectations, prices are going to increase in the future so they'll increase investment now which will further increase inflation as well. Um, if the price level of goods and services rises faster than interest rates then the real value of household savings will decrease 
And also we'll see that for consumers there'll be an inflationary spiral, um, inflationary expectations of buying now rather than later, which in turn um, pushes up consumption spending, pushing up AD, which also leads to inflation. It's also harder for firms to budget and plan due to uncertainty around future costs and prices. And firms are likely to invest for speculative reasons rather than productive reasons. <laughs> Very thorough. <laughs> <laughs> um, currently, inflation is below our target band. Do you think that's a problem? It's expected to start increasing. Yeah. It's not at the point where it gets back to them. So it depends if it's going to have a sustained increase. So on balance we think that it will increase. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we don't think it's a huge concern for the Reserve Bank because it is expected uh, on balance from all the factors to inf inflation to start increasing and it should get back to um, with the OCR at the 2.5%, it should get back into the target band okay. in the medium term. Good. <laughs> okay, but it is below the band now. Suppose you could go back in time, uh, 12 months or 18 months, and knowing what we know now, would you have made a different decision with the official cash rate? Um, 12 months ago we wouldn't have looked at changing it because at that point in time um, we had the high exchange rate, uh, the lower exchange rate than it is at the present time. But there's been a lot of external factors that have come in, so would we would say that yeah. Would we change it now? No, no, no because we no. because we no. on balance. We don't, we don't believe it's going to be. Yeah. It wasn't significant, significant like We don't believe it's significant. Yeah. Um, the only, only different was the exchange rate. Right? Um, because we feel that this rate of 0.7% is not harming the economy as such, and in the medium term, as we do expect it to reach a higher level, we don't feel that. <coughs> excuse me. Um, a change of the OCR would have the desired. The negative impacts of changing the OCR would outweigh the benefits of getting it back into that target band. Okay, good. That's a, that's a good answer. But can you tell me what would be one of the negative impacts? Increase in investment. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. No, no. Increase in investment. Increase in investment. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Increase in investment. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, so I really like the slide. It's really clear how um, how you see medium-term inflationary pressures uh, occurring. I wonder what's your view of um, medium-term inflationary oh, sorry of inflationary pressures going forward. And how would you set the OCR, or how do you plan to set the OCR in the future? Uh, well, we uh, don't think that there have been any major changes in the factors that we consider recently. So we would uh, keep the rate of, uh, the OCR at the same rate until um, a macro keep using the macro potential tools to address the concerns of increasing house price inflation until they stop becoming such a big concern, seeming they do contradict each other in the way that the OCR would deal with them. Um, and once the they st do start to balance and we are seeing increased inflationary pressures, we could start to increase the OCR to address those when it comes. Can I follow up on that? So you mentioned contradicting factors. What are those contradicting factors and how could macro potential tools help uh, resolve that? that the wealth effect. Um, the wealth effect from increasing house prices. House prices that causes yeah. inflationary pressure. Yeah. What, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you might be positive negative. Yeah. Or you mean the OCR? OCR. It has negative impacts on other sectors. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. within yeah. those sectors. Yeah. So we don't want to harm yeah. the OCR. Yeah. 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 Y
inflationary expectations within households. So it just provides a level of stability and also reassuring that price stability will be maintained. Okay, um, just a question on inflation expectations. The rules after the increase in the goods and service tax to around about 3%, they've now come down a little bit. H how do inflation expectations or how people think about price setting really affect inflation? Um, when consumers expect inflation in the future then they will be wanting to buy now before prices rise in the future and so that will increase consumption spending which will actually increase aggregate demand and cause inflation and also um, consumers will be looking to negotiate wage increases if they expect future prices to be higher which will could increase wages and then further increase consumption spending and inflationary pressure. And also uh, as they're negotiating increases in wages it increases the cost of production as firms have to pay the higher wages um, which means that firms may have to increase their prices to cover these higher costs and causes further inflationary pressures. Okay, so here's a hypothetical question for you. Say that inflation was currently above the 3% band, but the economy was in recession. How do you think the Reserve Bank should respond with the OCR? Um, they would respond by looking to increase the OCI to bring the, the inflation rate down into the target band if it was predicted to be sustained into the medium term, this high rate of inflation. Because the Reserve Bank of New Zealand's primary role is to maintain um, price stability, so their primary concern is this rather than focusing on growth and employment within the area, which we'd see in the recession. So it would be advisable to increase the OCR to bring back down into the inflation target band near the 2% win point in the medium term. Thank you. Back to me. Uh, so net migration to New Zealand has been increasing over this year. If this trend continues, what are some of the implications for our economy? Directly from net migration, we would see uh, these migrants would be spending in the economy and increasing consumption spending, increasing aggregate demand and causing inflationary pressures. Um, there'd also be increased demand for houses, which is going to further increase house prices. And also we may see, if there are skilled labour coming into New Zealand, we may see an increase in the skill base within New Zealand and therefore increasing productivity, increasing aggregate supply. Could offset some of the inflationary pressure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> how's the rebuilding in Christchurch going? It's um, kind of question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where you're from. You should yeah. be. Yeah. You, know, you, should, you should be experts, but really. Well, it was expected to take off quite rapidly, but we've seen that it's kind of been um, stalling a bit. Is Resources becoming scarce. Yeah. Um, it's there's a shortage of skilled labour in the region. And also resources becoming scarce and there's high costs of compliance and also we're seeing a lot of having to stabilise and then look to rebuild and there's a shortage within the construction sector of resources. Okay, good. So those are the developments. Mm -hmm. Thank you for telling me. It's <laughs> for me to know. Um, but how do you think that what do you think that will mean for the rest of the New Zealand economy? So Construction. Yeah. Construction. 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 Construction
with an overall increase in cost of materials, yeah. especially mm -hmm. within the construction sector yeah. nationwide because it is a shortage nationwide. So what do you say possible increase in that sector? Mostly regional. Let's go. For nationwide, it'll be a case of that as resources are becoming scarce within the Canterbury region, it's also nationwide as we're sourcing it from nationwide. Nationwide, <laughs> so <laughs> resources will become scarce, increasing the cost of resources as prices are bid up by producers trying to secure the um, resources, so the increase in cost of production which will decrease aggregate supply nationwide which will also cause inflationary pressure. Okay, very good. We're out of time now, but thank you. Thank you for your presentation and your answers. Thank you. Thanks guys. <laughs>